always say this, this is going to be fun today, but I'm hoping that this will be fun today. I wish we were here in person. We were all sitting around my living room or my lanai. Because in Florida, we have lanai's. We don't have patios or decks. We have lanai's. Also, if you have not watched my interview with Tom Vitoy from Design Design, um, it's the last video. It's linked here on Facebook and on YouTube. And um, watch it. He is just a very, very cool guy. And he is so warm and has this great heart for artists and has a ton of really good information um, from his perspective as a creative director for umpteen years. He's now retired, sadly, for all of us who worked with him on a regular basis and the people that did not get to work with Tom because he really is an artist, art director, and that is a beautiful thing. Um, so watch that. He's got a ton of insight uh, about this business. And he does do one-on-one -on -one consulting. So if you want to talk to him about sort of that whole greeting card world, I would definitely reach out to him. You can reach out through this device. I have a topic today that I want to talk about, and that is blogging. Woo. Okay. I, I, as you guys know, if you have watched me before or have ever had a conversation with me, I really do have this sort of love-hate relationship with blogging. I never quite know what its place is for me. Should I be doing it? Blah, 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 blah. You don't want to hear all those permutations of how I think about blogging. But suffice it to say, I have come to a, uh, a bit of a conclusion and I'm going to challenge myself in front of all of you people of I'm going to make a commitment at the end of our little chat today. And I know that it is kind of an eye twitcher and probably the one activity in our business that is absolutely fraught with procrastination. There are 4,000 other things we would do instead of blog. Although some people really love it and I love them that they love that. I have always found it to be sort of even though I, once I'm writing, it's good, but it's, there's this quote, and I think it's a Dorothy Parker. I meant to look it up and I forgot that um, she says something along the lines of, I hate to write, but I love having written. That's how I feel about blogging. I hate to blog, but I love having blogged. So we're going to go through kind of what that world looks like and what we can do better about that. Okay, so if you Google blogging 2019, which I have, you're going to come up with uh, approximately 10 jillion articles about blogging in 2019. And a lot of it is, is blogging dead? Should you start a blog? What is blogging about now? Can you make any money with your blog? Blah, 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 blog. So don't do it because it doesn't, it doesn't matter. I'll, honey, I'll just tell you what you need to know. Okay, so there are, in my world of view, I feel like there's about three kinds of blogs, basically. There's the lifestyle blog, which is really kind of, and we know these, these are the mommy bloggers, food bloggers, travel. They might have a really, it's very much about them and their life and their interests. They don't necessarily have another website. It's just a blog and they write about their thing. And some of these are kind of combo platters like mommy blogs that also do food, a lot of recipe type blogs or traveling with children, uh, living in an RV, whatever that might look like. It's sort of a lifestyle and it's a blog. And most of these are monetized through affiliate links to Amazon, to all kinds of places, as well as ads and maybe links to their own products. So that's how that's monetized. It's just a standalone blog that is about whatever lifestyle that person is living. Okay, the second kind of blog is more of an education blog. And those are blogs, a lot of tech type blogs where they're going to compare to products, software reviews, um, you know, all kinds of things, new plugins for WordPress. And so it's very tech oriented and it's always updating because tech keeps updating. So there's a lot of sort of things that revolve around education as far as technology goes. There's also a lot of blogs about 
just education how to's in general, crafts, um, how, how to, you know, home decor, uh, carpentry, whatever interest you have in how, how to do something, there's someone writing a blog that's gonna walk you through those kinds of steps. So then there's that education thing. And those are normally, or often, standalone blogs too. They're not necessarily connected to a bigger website, although they could be. Um, and again, they're monetized in those same methods. They might have affiliate links and they might have um, ads on those kinds of blogs. And they also um, probably link to courses that they sell or other products, digital products that they have. Okay, then we have the third kind of blog, which is really probably more the kind of blog that we as creative professionals, creative uh, business owners would use. And that is an adjunct onto our regular website. It's part of our websites, but the main part of our website is to showcase who we are and what we do. And the blog is sort of served up as a service or a little bonus or a reason for someone to stay longer on our website. Okay, so we're gonna go a little more in detail about that third kind of blog. And you, you know, you might have, I mean, there are people that, you know, have that kind of blog and then they also have one on, you know, the world of toast. I don't know if there's a toast blog, but I'm, I might start one because I'm kind of an aficionado of toast. I'm gonna check the comments now. I have a love-hate relationship with blogging, absolutely. Um, I enjoy doing it, but I'm pretty sure no one is reading it. Well. That is a good point, and that is one of the things where we're like, really, is anyone reading blogs these days? If if you agree with what I've just said, that there's these three kinds of blogs, and we are probably in that third kind where it's part of our bigger website, it's part of our bigger message of who we are and what we do, then just like every other part of our website or our business, we need to uh, know who we're talking to. We need to know why we are doing this. We need to know what the purpose is. What is our why? What is our viewpoint? Who are we talking to? Why are we even bothering with this? So you have to be clear about your intention of why you are having a blog in the first place and what, how it will help your business. Those are really important thoughts to have before you start one or if you're trying to look at the blog that you have now and go what am i doing here what am i supposed to be doing i don't know you know you know that rabbit hole that we all go down to so let's say you are a an artist an illustrator and you your intention is to license your artwork or sell it in some commercial fashion okay so more than likely you would use your blog as a way to give people a bigger picture of who you are, what you stand for, what you're about. So it, it kind of just it expands your personality. It's bigger than your about page, but it's sort of an ongoing conversation about what you're observing, who you are, what you're feeling at the time. And the other thing it can do is it just establishes this viewpoint, like if, if your faith is something that you are front and center with, that would be, you know, that would be in your blog. If you are hyper political, you might put that in there. If you are, you know, have another interest, you know, oh, I also raise chickens, that might be interesting to people. So you have to, it's sort of just to, just to expand a little bit about who you are and what you do. It can also be a place where you can show new work oh, I just finished this collection, or this is now in this store. You can just sort of, you know, softly promote yourself with things that are going on. You might, in this case, in our case, you might um, have an opinion about a trend that's going on and how you are using it in your work or what you're seeing as far as trends go. So there's different ways that you can approach what you're going to write about and why your viewer is going to care you kind of have to position is what do they want to know when they get here? What do they want to know that they're not showing them and just saying, here's my portfolio and here's my basic. I went to college and now I'm an artist about page. You might do a report on the latest show that you went to, you know, those kinds of things. So it's really, you're going to position it as sort of a, it's just talking about your business and talking about what's going on. Some people are much more 
open. They want to have all their kids on there and they, um, you know, it's there, it becomes sort of the lifestyle section of your website where you're going to explain a lot about yourself or other people are just like, Hey, I just drew the snowman. Okay. So that's if you are sort of in that um, professional illustrator category or writer or whatever that is, you're going to share it around the business. Okay. And now you can watch me read some comments. I just want to make sure I don't miss anything that's happening as we speak. Oh, yes. Um, I'm sorry. I was actually just reading that because that does not make very good video of me just reading. I will read it to you. Lisa says, I blog at least weekly tutorial style, BTS teaching style. I don't know what BTS means. I know that is back to school, but I don't know if that's what that is. When I was worked in retail advertising, BTS was back to school. Don't know. Explain. Okay. So that's in, in that category. Okay. Another kind of blog you might have is if you sell your work at some sort of, in some sort of retail situation, you have an Etsy shop, you have a print on demand links, or you are at a local gallery or a consignment shop or wherever that is. And you have you're selling retail. So your customer is someone that's actually going to buy a thing that you made, whether it's digital or whether it is, um, you know, a tangible object that they're going to buy. So when you are going to blog on that side, you would probably talk about new products. Hey, I just released this new thingamabob and it's really cool. And you can find it at Harry's drugstore or you can get it at my Etsy shop. And so you're going to be introducing new product. You're also going to talk about like, oh, this is really cool. My friend bought this and it's, you know, it's, uh, you know, she's got it in her living room and it looks so great over her fireplace. And so you, you'd, you know, bring things up so people can see it in situ. Um, you might interview some customers. Why do they love what you just did? And so you might have that conversation. You want to make sure that it's not always buy this, buy this, buy this, but you want to help them see how it's important in their lives. Obviously you would have events. If you're going to do a pop-up shop, you would, you know, you just want to make sure that you're showing up for them. And you also, um, people love the behind the scenes thing. They love to see how something is made. They want to see what your studio looks like. They want to see what you're inspired by. And so when you are working directly with your customer, the actual buyer of the thing, you want to sort of set that scene of why they want to be included in this process and included in buying that thing that you have put your heart and soul in. And so remember, what do they want to know about this? What do they want to know? They want to know that it's a good value. They want to know that it's cool. They want to know where they can get it. They want to know where you are. So always think about what do they want to know? Not what necessarily what you want to write, but what do they want to know about what you do? And the final category of the kinds of blogs that more than likely you and I would have. So say you're a teacher and you do workshops. You might, um, people, when they take a workshop, especially an in-person workshop that might cost a little money, they want to know who you are. They want to know your teaching style. They want to know if you're all business, if you're funny, if you're too quirky for them. They kind of want to know that, and those kinds of things can be revealed through your blog. And um, obviously, you'd be telling them about new things happening. You would be telling them about what happened. Oh my gosh, we had this great workshop last weekend, and this is the work that we did. Um, these are the materials we used. As a teacher, you might um, do process videos, tutorials you might share your favorite tools. So there's different ways that you can have a blog that isn't always about buy my stuff. And again, asking that question, what do they want to know by being here? What do they want to know? So those are some ideas of what you can do on this blog, whether it's needs a refresh or you're starting from scratch or it is long dead. <laughs> Not that I know anything about that. So why do it? Why do it at all when it feels like, oh my gosh, that is just one more big deal that I have to put on my plate, put in my planner, put in my schedule, 
why, why, why should I do this thing when I don't really know if anybody's reading it. I don't know if blogs are dead. I don't know if anybody cares. I have a couple reasons why you might want to consider blogging or refreshing your blog. One is apparently Google really likes it. And you know, we like it when Google likes us. Please be my friend, Google, please. Do you like me? Yes or no. And so when you, when Google likes something, you just get more people coming to your, to your website who will end up following you on Instagram and lots of wonderful things can happen because you were found. And what Google likes now is they like consistent, valuable content. So they want to deliver people to people that are consistently updating their content and consistently showing that they are giving value to their customers. And I don't know how they know this. They just know this. And it's probably too scary for us to know how they know this, but they do. And, you know, a few years ago, like five, 10 years ago, the whole point of a blog was to basically stuff it full of keywords. And that would, you know, like, oh, I'll just start a sentence with art licensing or illustration or, you know, everything had to be, you know, you were stuffing it with keywords in order to be found. Well, apparently that is still true up to a point, you know, keywords are important, but valuable content that they can see people are responding to or sharing that ups your ranking in Google and we want to be found by Google. No matter how you feel about that, that's how it works. Okay. If you consistently blog, that gives you a whole bunch of content. You will accumulate content and that content, whether it is in the form of small essays, uh, video, um, you know, little memes you might be designing, something like that. Those are things that you can use other places. So you could, you know, if you have a longer essay, you can pull out chunks of it and make it into an Instagram post. You can share the whole shebang on Twitter and, you know, links to Twitter. You can dole it out in various combos so that people start, you know, they start to connect you and this voice. And so there's, that's a really great way to sort of have this basic kit form. Um, and then you can dole it out other places. The other thing, which I just thought of, is when you blog consistently and you start to develop your voice, sometimes that can elevate you to something bigger than an Instagram post or um, a way to, oh, I have to put something on Facebook. It could become a book. If you are writing consistently and you all of a sudden you realize and you know, as we know, hindsight is how we figure things out. We look back and go, oh, that's a thing. That is a theme. That is a thread. And when you have a lot of content, when you're building content, that's when you start to see that thread. That's when you start to say, I think I have a book going here, or I think I have something bigger than what I just thought I was talking about my life because by writing, is how things get revealed. So that's just a, that's just another thought that it can, it can be a very powerful content for you, both personally and professionally, if you are doing it consistently. Okay. Some people blog because they really like writing and it's a great outlet. It's a, it's self-expression. They're able to express themselves well. And that is just a cool way to do that without making it a huge deal and making it into a book. They just want to write. And that is perfectly acceptable, fine, wonderful way to use your words. That is a great thing. But to me, the biggest reason that you would have a blog as a part of your bigger website, the bigger reason is to serve your customer, whether that's a potential student, whether that's a potential client that could license your artwork onto products, whoever that is, you are serving them. And when I say serving someone, I don't mean being pandering and self, you know, and, and subservient to them. I mean, what do they need? What do they want? What do you have that they can go, well, that's cool. That's cool. That's what I mean by serving is taking your talents and helping other people sort of digest the information or use 
Okay. <laughs> that other video just blanked right out. I'm like talking away and all of a sudden, I'm still here. Hello, hello, I'm here. But the number one reason to blog is it serves your audience. And that is that they have an enhanced experience by being on your website by the fact that you are blogging. And they don't have to be long. They don't have to be 5,000 word essays. You just need to make sure that they are fresh and new and you. That was, that's beautiful. Fresh and new and you. That's all people are expecting. That's all they want. So then we go back to the actual doing of the blog. We can say, oh, by golly, Ronnie, you are right. We should be blogging. And there's lots of good reasons to do this. But here is going to be my advice. You need to ask yourself, if you're going to do a blog or if you have a blog, can you keep it up? And that is, that is a total yes or no question. Can you keep up with having a blog that consistently shows up with valuable information? And when I'm talking valuable, I mean like valuable in small letters because valuable is, is of course in the eye of the beholder, but authentic advice for who you're talking to, remembering who that reader is, remembering who that person is. Are you serving them in a way that brings them a little more value or a smile or a moment to pause? Those are all great reasons. So you have to be able to say, yes, indeed, I can keep this up and put yourself on some sort of schedule, but I'm getting ahead of things. And is your blog really serving your audience? If it's just to, uh, you know, go, oh, I made this great meatloaf the other night and you're not a blog, a food blogger or whatever, or you're just doing it for your own um, creative outlet that isn't really serving anybody or turning people away. If you have like super darling sweet, you know, traditional artwork and you're ranting on some, you know, um, uh, what should I say? A slanted view of the world that doesn't really connect. You might want to reconsider blogging and just bring, put another blog somewhere else that doesn't, you know, you don't have to connect it to your artwork or your business. Think about whether you are really truly serving your audience. And here is my biggest advice ever. And I have this conversation with, I've had this conversation with quite a few, uh, coaching clients over the years. And I had this little talking to with myself often. And that is, if your blog is dead, or if anyone goes to your blog and the last time you posted was sometime in 2016, then for the love of all that's holy, make your blog go away. Just take it down for a while until you, until you commit to it again, just take it down. And if you have like, I see a lot of new websites and there's the blog is coming soon. Don't even bother put coming soon on there. Just when you blog, when you start a blog, put the menu item up and go for it. But having this placeholder or having an old tired blog that is dead or fills you with dread by the thought of bringing your blog to life again, uh, get it off your website. And here's why. You've made this beautiful website and you have put a lot of time and attention into updating your artwork, having a really cute picture of yourself, really setting the stage. And the person that gets there is like, I like being here a lot. I like her work. It's very fresh. She's very new. This is really cool. Oh, look, she has a blog. I'll go look at her blog. Oh, look, huh, there's a blog here. The last blog was in 2015. Mm, what's her problem? Whenever you give someone an opportunity to be kind of bummed or disappointed or confused, you may have lost them a little bit. So if you have one of those blogs, not that I know anything about this, but if you have one of those blogs that is not being paid attention to, make it go away. It's kind of like if any of you have ever planned at least one wedding, if not more than one, and you're doing all these plans and you're like, oh my gosh, we need to have mints, but that's the last thing on the list and the mints have to match the bridesmaid dresses. And the last thing on the list is uh, we couldn't get the mints done. You don't walk around the, um, 
wedding reception, you go, well, it would have been better had I had the mints, but we didn't have the mints. Nobody ever knew the mints existed. So if you don't have a blog and you're putting a coming soon on there, make that go away. And if you have a dead blog, take it out. Just take it down. <laughs> no questions asked. Take it down and bring it back later if you commit to it. BJ says, I recently redid my website and turned the blog off for that very reason, too old. Yeah, it really, it just drags you down. They're like, whoa, what you been doing for the last two and a half years? Erica, we tell clients that all the time. If you're not going to update your blog, don't have it there. Yeah, it's way better. It's way, way, way better to have it gone. Denise, I have a friend who is sort of blog, a blogging guru. He says, don't just sell me something, solve me something. Well, that's a good way to say it. Uh, show me how to find something I need or want to help me fix an issue or discover something new to me. Yes. And you know, that's, that's not for everyone. That's kind of a big job sometimes. And you're like, do I have it in me? But if you want to use your voice, if you want to serve your people in a different way or to just set the scene for them to make it easier for them, you always want to be thinking, is this making this better for the person reading this? And if the answer is yes, then just continue on, my darling. I mean, just keep doing that and bring valuable stuff. Doesn't have to be earth shattering value, just good value where people say, that was cool. Don't have to go, oh my gosh, that was the coolest thing ever. They just have to go, oh, that was nice, that was, that was cool. It, it was a positive experience for them. Okay, so here is my big commitment because I looked at my own blog and I, I looked at it and I thought, oh my gosh, I have blogged three times in 2019. And we are now coming up on the six month, we're six months in to 2019. So we have six months left. Here is my commitment to you. Now, a few weeks ago, you know, I committed to my Ivy Lee method for three months to use this Ivy Lee method of um, planning my days. And I gotta tell you, I'm on track. It's the 27th of June and I am on track. It is uh, kind of a life changer. So because um, July 1st is coming up, it's another new time that I can commit and I am going to commit to blogging weekly, weekly for the next three months. And I want to report my results, whether those results are more eyeballs on my website, more click throughs to other things, what that has done for me, or I don't know if I can figure out Google Analytics to tell me if this really has worked. But I am going to, because I'm, I'm the guinea pig. <laughs> now, you can also join this challenge if you like, but I will be the lab rat of blogging and I'm going to commit to blogging once a week for the next three months, starting July 1st. Okay, I'm not going to get one out July 1st because I have a commitment all of that day, but you get my point. By the time I come back here on July 11th, because we won't be here on the 4th, I will have started blogging my weekly blog. Okay? You heard, you heard it here, kids. That's what I'm going to do. But again, I will say that blogging is a big decision to make. It's a, you're either going to do it or you're not going to do it. It is not one of those halfway deals. Either you're in it or you're not in it. And I've decided to jump back into it and see where that takes me in the next three months. And if you guys want to jump in, feel free to put that in the comments and go, yes, Ronnie, I'm going to commit to that too. Although I totally understand if you don't want to blog at all. But I will tell you, as my Aunt Marie would say, immediately, if not sooner, if you have a dead blog, get it off your website. So that's what I have to say today. I'm so happy you're here. I find you all adorable. I'm sorry that we blanked out in the middle of the other video, but we'll get it all together. Here's one other thing. If you choose to take your blog down completely, just go, it's gotta go dark because I'm not doing anything with it. You can relook at the content that you have taken down, you know, copy and paste it, whatever, however you wanna do that. If you look at that content, and some of it is going to be tired and old and meaningless because whatever reason, if you want to bring your blog back up, 
you could reuse some of that material because most likely if no one's been reading your blog for a while, they're not going to remember that that's refreshed material. So you already have like a pile of stuff that you could put back in there, updated, refreshed. And so it's not a complete loss. If you stopped blogging in 2013, go back and read those and there may be parts that you go, oh yeah, that was kind of interesting or wonder what's happening now with that. Let me, let me do a little update on that. So it's not a loss if you have just abandoned it, but just don't make it look like, you know, this beautiful darling website and then Death Valley under one button. <laughs> Uh, oh, thank you, Debbie. Yes, I posted before we got disconnected. I like the idea of quick, short blog like posts on Instagram. What about that? I'm not really good with the actual blogging. Okay, I like how people are using Instagram as a, as a micro blog, if you will. They're, they're a little longer content in Instagram. I think it's great. I don't know if that, and smarter people than me on this side of things could, could answer this. But I don't know if it adds to your Googleization as well as your own website. And yes, I did just make up that word. Um, so I, I don't know that. I think it's a way to serve your customers very well, to serve your audience, is to give them a little more something, something when it's appropriate. And I think that that's great. And it's a, I think it's a good way to get your feet wet of writing longer things than just I just drew this snowman and so, or isn't winter great, you know, or whatever that might be. And so, which is fine. Some days that's all you want to put on there, but it's a great way to sort of get the priming the pump and you might want to, or you could pick up that exact copy and put it on your blog with a little enhancement or a little more thought around that. And you could even say something like, I wrote this on Instagram, but I've had further thoughts on that. And I wanted to explain a little more, whatever that is. So I think that can go back and forth, but I don't know if that is necessarily as good as having it on your website. Maybe someone else can answer that. Erica, you might be able to. Instagram is taking the likes away, so I'm unsure how that will affect it. Yeah, I think, you know, and that is the thing. Well, you know, when we go back to what you own, so Instagram I know is just, just because they were on the Today Show or something the other day, they're poised for another kind of refresh of how they're going to, you know, how, what Instagram is going to be about in the next six to nine months. Everything always changes. So your website is your real estate. You get to own that. And so that is a way to have your little corner of the world that is yours and not beholden to what's going to happen on any given social media platform. So think about it that way. That is another advantage to having a blog is that it's yours. You own it. It is in your domain. And I don't mean your, your web domain. I mean your world building of your little fiefdom that you're building. That is, that is part of that. So I, I think that that is another reason to, to do that. Um, Instagram could go away entirely and with it all your posts. So having them on your own blog might be better. I, I think that's always true. It's like they say, if you're relying on building your social media platform and ignoring your own email list, you know, you have to balance that out. You have to have your own email list because those are the people that have said, I like you and you can continue to communicate with them no matter what the, the tech gods decide to do. Yes, Erica. Erica says you could always take mini blogs you do on Instagram and do them on your website blog. No one says they have to be super long tail form blogs. Yes. Yeah, they can be short little paragraphs. And, uh, you know, it, it could be a thought. It could be a haiku. <laughs> I think I did write a blueprint haiku, which was rather hilarious, at least to me. Yes, in your blog. Yeah, I, I would assume that, yes, I mean, I think pictures, particularly when you are a visual artist, and that's that behind the scenes thing, which is BTS, by the way. I learned that in the last video. Um, that th those kinds of things. And I, I know, Kathy, you do that. You have a lot of that stuff. And so that would be great to, you know, expand on that. And, you know, even if, you know, some people are not comfortable mixing their worlds. This is my business. This is my life. But when your life 
you know, if you, because we don't have a lot of separation between what inspires us. You know, we can't shut off like, oh, I'm in Paris. I'm not going to think about images that I could use in my art later. You are going to incorporate some of that stuff. And I went to Paris and this is how I was inspired. You might want to do that. These are the patterns I saw, or this is the, you know, I kept seeing this same shape or whatever that is. And, and people like to see that. People like to know, particularly if you're trying to talk to, if, if the person you're trying to talk to is a potential client that wants to hire you for some sort of illustration project or they want to license their, your work, they want to know how your brain works. And they also want to know what kind of person you are. If your blog is like a big rant complainville, they're going to go, yeah, I don't know if I want to work with her. This is a way to showcase who you are to these people where they go, she sounds really cool. What an interesting way of thinking of things. Let's call her. So it can be, I think it can be a really great thing for you. Um, even though we feel like, is anyone really reading? And is anyone reading a blog anymore? Which is another reason to go with that short form because I, I find myself like, you know, they, and there's, there's a million ways to learn more about how to do this, like making them skim, skimmable because people skim so much now or to pull out bullet points, whatever that is. But you can Google kind of thing of how to make a blog post more readable. And I think short, snappy, interesting with pictures does the job. Um, Denise says, I set all my blog posts back to draft. I am on WordPress. This way I still have them to draw from, but they are not public. You did that during, <laughs> during this video? I'm impressed. I'm impressed. That's awesome. So you took my immediately, if not sooner. She did it sooner. Um, please watch the interview with Tom Vitoy. Um, really chock full of good stuff. And he's such a warm and funny guy. He's just great. Um, and it was really fun to talk with him. I was so um, thrilled to, to hang with him for that. So watch that. So if there's anything that you want to ask me about or want me to address in this format, you know I'm happy to do that. I'm happy to dig in and, and see if we can um, uncork some ideas or uncork some ideas of how we can build our businesses. Cause that's what I'm all about. I got, want you guys to succeed. You're adorable, truly. And I just am super excited to be here for you and let me know how I can help you. All right, you guys, I'm going to close this up and I will talk to you all soon. Thank you from the bottom of my heart for being here and stay caffeinated, my friends. Bye.